TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The high state of alert in the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria continues as Israel's security forces maintain relentless operational activity against terror elements. Israel reportedly okays sale of its Iron Dome aerial defense system to the United Arab Emirates. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan levels a fresh warning to Greece amid heightened tensions. The high state of alert in the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria continues. Shots were fired at an armored IDF vehicle conducting routine activity in Samaria. Consequently, Israeli forces returned fire to the source of gunfire, and thankfully no injuries were reported among the IDF troops. Meanwhile, IDF, ISA or Shin Bet and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counterterrorism activity throughout the West Bank with chief focus on the northern Samaria sector. Four terror suspects were consequently apprehended and transferred to the Israel Security Agency for further questioning. Subsequently this morning, security forces operated in the town of Jenin in order to apprehend two suspects involved in a number of recent shooting attacks. Following ISA intelligence, Israel Border Police Special Operations troops from the Hamas unit alongside IDF soldiers operated to apprehend both suspects. While surrounding the residence in which both suspects were located, an explosive device detonated and the suspects opened fire toward the Israeli forces. Consequently, the operating security forces fired back according to standard operating procedures and the two terror suspects were both killed. In parallel, armed terrorists opened fire from a number of directions toward the Israeli forces who responded in kind. At least three other terrorists were consequently killed, while a number of others were reportedly wounded. Thankfully, no injuries were reported among the Israeli troops. It is worth noting that one of the suspects was identified as Rahman Hazim, the brother of the terrorist who murdered three Israeli civilians in the shooting attack in Tel Aviv's Dizengov Street earlier this year. It is further important to highlight that while Israel persists with its unrelenting war on terror, it is also engaged in protecting freedoms for uninvolved Palestinians. Despite the heightened state of alert, the Israeli Defense Ministry instructed to lift the closure which was imposed on the West Bank and on the crossings to the Gaza Strip due to the high holiday of Rosh Hashanah at midnight last night. The referred to territories will remain open, not taking into account outstanding operational considerations, until the eve of Yom Kippur, Hebrew for the Day of Atonement. Meanwhile, United Arab Emirates Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan spoke by phone with Prime Minister Yair Lapid last night, during which he praised Israeli leader's speech at the UN General Assembly last week, where he stressed the importance of peace to the peoples of the region and that an agreement that is based on a two states for two peoples is the right thing for Israel. Abu Dhabi's top diplomat further stressed that the success of the UAE and Israel in building effective and stable relations was the result of the fruits of peace and the ability to work together for the prosperous future for the coming generations. It is worth noting also that this phone conversation came after the London-based Reuters news agency published an exclusive report citing two sources who acknowledged that Israel has agreed to sell the Iron Dome aerial defense system to the United Arab Emirates. This expected sale will significantly bolster the UAE's aerial defenses after Abu Dhabi had already procured Israeli-made interceptors and electronic warfare systems capable of intercepting unmanned aerial vehicles. While relevant authorities in Israel and the UAE did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment, the defense establishments in both Israel and the United States have often been vocal of the benefits of the Abraham Accords, including, most notably, in matters of aerial defense. And while the UAE is seemingly working to eliminate the threat of Iranian drone attacks, 
The Islamic Republic's unmanned aerial systems are evidently being employed by Russian forces in Ukraine. So we, uh, we do assess that the Russians now are using uh, uh, the Iranian drones uh, that we've talked about in the past being that were delivered to Russia, that we do assess that they are now using them in Ukraine. Uh, in terms of their effectiveness, I don't want to provide a battle damage assessment here from the podium uh, or get into specific intelligence other than to say, again, we've seen them employ them. Um, I, we've also seen reports of the Ukrainians uh, uh, shooting down some of these drones. Again, I'm not going to get into specific numbers, um, but we assess that, that is, those are credible. The employment of Iranian attack drones in Ukraine has infuriated Kiev authorities who responded by downgrading relations with Tehran and expelling the Islamic Republic's ambassador from the country. Meanwhile, Iranian citizens continue to flood the streets of towns and cities throughout the country, demanding an end to the tyrannical Ayatollah regime. According to the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, which monitors the developments in Iran, a brutal crackdown has been employed by the Ayatollah regime's security forces. We at the UN Human Rights Office are very concerned uh, by the continued violent response by security forces to protests in Iran, as well as communications restrictions affecting landline and mobile usage, the internet and social media platforms. Thousands have joined anti-government demonstrations throughout the country over the past 11 days. Security forces have responded at times with live ammunition. Due in part to the restrictions on telecommunications, it is difficult to establish the precise number of casualties and arrests. On the 24th of September, state media put the number killed at 41. Non-governmental organizations monitoring the situation have reported a higher number of deaths, including women and children, and hundreds injured across at least 11 provinces. While reports emerging out of Iran have indicated severe internet disruptions, Western governments, including the United States in particular, opted to remove regulatory obstacles related to sanctions, effectively enabling private companies to facilitate internet connectivity throughout the Islamic Republic. Uh, what we are doing, I'll lay out a couple of actions that we have taken as it relates to uh, the Internet. On September 21st, the Iranian government cut off, as you know, access to the Internet for most of its 80 million citizens as, as courageous Iranians take to the streets to protest the death of Masa Amini. The United States is taking action to support the free flow of information to the Iranian women, uh, I'm sorry, the Iranian people specifically, uh, as, more broadly. On September 23rd, which was this past Friday, the Department of Treasury issued an updated general license that will increase support for internet freedom in Iran and authorize technology companies to offer the Iranian people more options of secure outside platforms and services. With these changes, we are helping the Iranian people access tools that are better equipped to counter the Iranian government's effort to surveil and censor and censor them as well. The White House press secretary further highlighted Washington's unwavering support for the citizens of Iran. Turning to Turkey, where President Recep Tayyip Erdogan leveled a fresh warning to Greece over its purported deployment of armored units in the Greek islands of Lesbos and Samos, dubbing the Greek maneuver a covert occupation. Yunanistan'ı kışkırtarak üzerimize salanların niyetlerini gayet iyi biliyoruz. Parası, denizi ve havasıyla ülkemiz savunmasından taviz vermeyecek ama vaktimizi, enerjimizi, dikkatimizi dağıtmaya yönelik kirli senaryolara da papuç bırakmayacağız. Batı Trakya ve adalara yığılan silahlar Bizim için bir anlam ifade etmez. Çünkü bizim gücümüz ve imkanlarımız bunların çok ötesindedir. Ama bu durumun söz konusu ülke için gizli bir işgal anlamına geldiğini de hatırlatmak isteriz. The Turkish leader went on to insist that Ankara is not interested in escalating the situation vis-à-vis -vis its Western neighbor, all the while ridiculing Greek expectations related to Western guarantees. Amerika'dan, Avrupa'dan sizlere gelen destekler zannediyor musunuz sizi kurtarır? 
kurtarmaz. Sadece patinaj yaparsınız, başka bir işe yaramaz. In response to the Turkish leader's rhetoric, EU foreign affairs and security policy spokesman Peter Stano urged Ankara to de-escalate the situation. When you mentioned the overall issue of uh, Turkish actions and rhetorics, I can only uh, reiterate the solidarity of the European Union with Greece. Greece is a member state of the European Union, and the European Union and its member states have formulated very clearly in number of uh, European Council conclusions its expectations on Turkey to um, de-escalate, to be engaged in constructive de-escalation in order to advance the mutually beneficial constructive cooperation, not only with Greece, but um, with the European Union as a whole. We expect that uh, Turkey would seize with the, with the rhetorics and with threatening rhetorics and with steps that are not really conducive for the escalation. And what is very important and very important expectation uh, on the side of the EU and its member states is that Turkey respects the sovereignty of, uh, of member states of the European Union and that Turkey engages in solving all the open issues in the spirit of good neighborly relations with full respect for the international law. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.